everyone, and welcome to the second episode in the new series on this 1958 Gibson Les Paul special in original TV yellow finish that I bought from Goodwill, and that is a true story. If you want to see the first episode, it is available on uh, my channel. I just want to say thank you to everyone who's newly subscribed, and thank you to everyone who watched that video. Uh, as I'm making this, it's almost up to 300,000 views, which is absolutely incredible. Uh, the plan for today is to take a detailed look inside of this guitar, uh, verify that some of these parts are indeed original, um, including the pots and caps. Uh, the P90s here take measurements on the P90s, which should be interesting because uh, they did vary in the 1950s, so we'll take a look at that, uh, as well as the routes underneath the pickups. Uh, I also need to remove the tuners and see what the damage is underneath there, and uh, basically get this guitar ready for the uh, next step in the restoration, which is not refinishing the uh, incredible original TV yellow finish, but uh, we need to do a refret on the guitar, um, see what the issue is with the kind of microphonic qualities in the bridge pickup, clean the pots, and you know, overall clean up and set up to get this thing stage ready, studio ready. And if you want to stick around, I'll talk about um, some positive developments in regards to um, the, that restoration process. So uh, I want to start out with cutting off these terrifying uh, Fender bullet strings that are decades old and take a look uh, at what's underneath the tuners. All right, so I purposefully left the original strings on this guitar to do the demo because I think it tells a story. These uh, Fender bullet strings, as they call them, I'll show you here, but uh, they literally look like a, a bullet casing there on the end. And these came out in the 70s. They still make them today, but they're not very popular. So um, it goes to show, I mean, I think these strings are, as I said, probably decades old. So this guitar has certainly not been maintained in, in a very long time. All right, so here is the original tailpiece to the guitar. You can see the, the wear on top there from years of strings creating the groove there on the tailpiece. And it's, it's super lightweight. Uh, and that is indeed the, the original part. So we'll set that aside for now. The action on this guitar is horrifically high. Um, also, the strings were wrapped around, you know, one way or the other. Uh, and so it, it was just incredibly difficult to play, but um, it actually sounded really, really cool. So, and I think we'll go ahead and turn it around this way so you can get a better look as I am working on it here. All right, here we are. And, uh, you know, we've got some extra holes here. Hopefully you're able to view this with me. We've got a few extra holes, um, which was expected. And it seems that the middle um, tuner holes where the shaft goes through is maybe enlarged slightly. But essentially what I'm gonna do is put on a, a new set of tuners. It could be a reissue set or I do have an original set of single line Clusons, which uh, would have been on this guitar. And uh, these would be a perfect fit for the guitar, as you'll see here. And they have the original buttons and everything, so they're, they're a perfect matching set for the patina of this guitar, but um, that is gonna leave the extra holes, as you can see here, from, um, where they had these ones on backwards, it seems, but uh, um, you know that could be easily filled in and maybe paint matched right there, and they would disappear. So uh, I think that looks much better, and obviously that's period correct. So I might go with these if uh, they seem to hold up. So uh, let's move on and take a look at the pots and see if they are original to the guitar. We should have a matching set of four um, pots from 58 
and uh, original Bumblebee capacitors as well in 1958. So uh, let's take a look at these. Another interesting detail, uh, I saw this sort of scribble on the back of this cover uh, since I bought the guitar, but I didn't really look at what it said, but it says uh, 82454, which is exactly the serial number on the guitar. So uh, someone inscribed that on the back of the plate there for some reason. All right, let's take a look at the pots. Nothing on the back plate there. And here we have um, incredibly, what looks like completely untouched set of pots. Let me get you guys a close look here. So it looks like what we have here is a complete set of untouched pots from 1958. Clearly original to the guitar, original solder joints in here, and the original uh, matching bumblebee capacitors. And this is exactly what you want to see. I mean, you know, I really thought in looking at this guitar uh, when I was purchasing it, you know, that that it probably was original based on the fact that only a few parts that were replaced were probably just for, um, you know, playability. The tuners, probably the pig guard that had shrunk and been replaced, everything else looked original. So, um, you know, I figured these, these pots were original and, and they sure are. And uh, just a cool little fact, this would be the exact wiring harness in a 1958 Burst Les Paul that would be worth two, three hundred thousand plus. So uh, obviously a lot of the parts on this guitar are carried over, uh, but uh, this, is, this is the exact wiring harness. So just a cool little fact on a guitar that's you know, worth a fraction of the cost uh, as a holy grail burst, but has some of the same parts in it. So that's uh, definitely cool and exactly what you wanna see. Uh, I, I believe the dates on these pots are on the side of the pots. And, you know, I, I'm just, I'm not going to take them out to try to verify that. You can look at these and see that that's, that's the ori original solder and it's, uh, it's never been outside of this guitar for 60 years. So uh, I'm not going to be the guy to do that. So uh, while we're in here, we'll take a look at uh, inside of the switch cavity as well. There we are. There's the original cover. Might have had some kind of sticker or something back there. Not sure. And inside uh, we have the original switch. And uh, there's really not much information in there. I don't know if you're a Gibson freak, then you may be able to look in there and, and see some, some details worth noting. But uh, that's original, untouched, no surprises, which, which is good. Uh, but the main thing is original pots and uh, factory TV yellow finish in there as well. No routes, nothing weird going on. So that's exactly what we want to see there. All right, let's go ahead and remove this bridge pickup and uh, see if there's any obvious uh, signs as to why I'm getting this microphonic thing going on and we'll get a reading of the pickups and uh, see what those turn out to be. Here's the original cover. Um, it does have a little stamp inside there, UC452B, and then a two there as well. Hopefully you can see that if I get that in the light. All right, and here's the original pickup in rough condition. Mm. So definitely some visible problems going on here. First of all, uh, the top of the cover or whatever you want to call it, the bobbin is, is cracked. It's cracked literally going along the side there. Um, it's cracked there. There's not even an area really for me to grab this thing. Um, Hmm. Oh, we've, we've even got a crack down here at the bottom. And uh, check that out. Some pieces of, of the bobbin 
down there that had broken off. This pickup is so fragile that I don't even want to uh, proceed with this at all. So I'm gonna take these parts out, obviously, because those could rattle around and cause more issues. And uh, I mean, it's hard to see. Maybe you guys can see with me, but that's clearly, I don't, I don't think this pickup has ever been removed. So um, I'm gonna try to gently put this back in place. I'm gonna put the cover back on and I'm gonna let this uh, be for a while and have my pickup guy take a look at it. And uh, I'm not an expert on, on that. And this is so fragile, I don't want to, to make a mistake. So um, in seeing that, we're gonna leave the pickups alone and we'll go ahead and take the measurements on these. All right, so uh, this gets pointed out in, in every video I make, but this is not the most scientific way of getting the reading on your pickups. Um, but it's a quick, easy way to do it. You take your multimeter and you can just plug in a quarter inch guitar cable, <clears throat> turn everything up all the way. And now we are rolling. So um, in the uh, neck position here, we uh, are getting a reading of eight K. Let's see if I can, maybe you can see that with me. Just about 8K on the neck position, which is maybe uh, slightly hotter than I expected. Let's see about the bridge. 7.8K ohms, interesting. That's about where I thought it might be. So uh, this seems to be more consistent with, say, uh, the earlier Les Pauls. From what I understand, the single cuts had slightly lower reading on the pickups, and then the double cuts seem to have higher readings into the 8.5K. Uh, and the, the reading on the pickup itself is not an end-all be-all. It's just, you know, one attribute to how the pickup's gonna sound. So the, the final part worth noting on this guitar is the pick guard. As you see here, this is not a factory pick guard for a 1958 special. And actually, thanks to all of you who commented on the video and, and emailed me, you guys did the research uh, to let me know. This is from a, I believe a 50 or 50s or 60s K or Harmony guitar, and that it is the exact pick guard. So uh, the question is, why would someone have done this and more than likely with the condition of this guitar uh, the shape that it's in you know the original pit guard probably saw a lot of use cracked shrunk and back in the day in the 60s 70s whatever uh, there probably wasn't a replacement guard for a les paul special kind of a uh, a unique pit guard so they decided to um, create their their own guard and uh, that's what they came up with, and it's one of a kind. I think it's incredibly cool and is going to stay on the guitar. I think most people agreed uh, to leave leave the pickguard on the guitar and the knob. I like the, I like the little knob there. I could find an original one, but nobody's got that, so I find it to be cool. Uh, and some people mentioned they thought there might be a route underneath the pickguard. I don't think there is. There's no reason to route underneath the guard. Um, and with the modifications, I mean, literally, the guard, the knob, and the tuners, everything else is original. So there's, I, w I would bet money there's, there's nothing underneath there. And I really don't want to turn those screws. It looks like they've been there for half a century. So I really just, I don't really care to look underneath, to be honest with you. Uh, people did ask what this piece is right here. And this is a part of this original pit guard. Uh, you can see part of the, the little design that was there. And for whatever reason, they kind of cut it like that and, and left it there. This would have been the original screw hole to the original guard, I believe. Um, and personally, I don't really like this. So uh, I'm going to, Take it off. It doesn't stay in place either. So, so there you are. You can see the the design there at the end. Uh, so this, I don't know, would have gone somewhere over here. That's where the design lines up, and they cut it and whatever. But uh, when I clean this up, you probably 
won't be able to, to really tell that it was there. I think it looks a little bit cleaner this way and, and I prefer it. Uh, I think we've taken a look at everything here. It all checks out. Um, and you know, this was kind of a nerdy video, but it, it's, I'm into this stuff and uh, restoring uh, old guitars, meaning fix what needs to be fixed and leave what's original, original. Um, if you uh, want to comment on my tools or my, my table, my makeshift table here, uh, I just moved and I've not been able to set up my, my workstation to, to really do the work I need to do. So uh, this headstock is going off the table, so it's, it's not at risk here. You can put this underneath if, if that helps. Um, in terms of what's happening with this with this guitar going forward, uh, my good friend Joel offered to refret the guitar, uh, which I personally I, I really wasn't excited to do. I've done my 59 Stratocaster, my 58 Strat. I've done tons of Fender guitars, but Gibsons are obviously different. You can't take the neck off, um, and this one specifically has binding on it, uh, which makes refretting rather annoying. So. Um, my friend Joel of JW Restoration has offered to do this guitar and he's an absolute legend. He's worked with everyone from Joe Bonamassa down, down the list. Currently he's working with Philip Sace on some stuff. So uh, I'm going to be shipping it to him literally uh, when I'm done finishing this video. And he can take a look at this pickup, see if there's anything we can do to solve the issues there. Uh, because he's also a pickup expert. Uh, I'm going to clean out the pots, get them moving freely. I'm going to do a refret, new bone nut. Still thinking on the tuners, you know, might go with these original single lines. They look they look like they fit the part, uh, but there's a few other options I'm looking at, maybe just going with something modern for now that will work precisely and uh, reliably. And those can go in the case as the an original set, you know. But uh, there we are. That's the uh, close look at the 1958 Les Paul Special from Goodwill. If you haven't checked out the original video, go check it out if you care. Um, and really, my friend Joel, he's going to film the repair work to this guitar, so we will certainly see it. But I'm not going to be dragging out this series, making all kinds of little videos uh, uh, on stuff. I'm going to be getting the guitar back and it'll be nearly ready to go. So I'm hoping in probably a few weeks uh, this guitar will be complete and uh, we can do a finalized video and, and actually see how it plays and how it sounds, which I'm, I'm super excited for. So I want to thank everyone again for tuning in. Everyone who's newly subscribed uh, really means so much to me, the support and uh, just the, the amount of interest in old guitars and, and tones has been awesome and I'm, I'm thankful for this um, place to show off what I love so thanks guys I'll see you in the next one